it's April 14th, 2019, and this is The Calling. We've been talking a lot about faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness of faith, talking about patience and waiting on the Lord. And um, the Lord uh, just reminding me of some things that, that obviously are very important but sometimes uh, have been lost with the modern gospel. And the Lord's just putting it in my heart to remind his body of these things. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, Paul talking to Timothy, and he says that, talking about God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Now, we want to talk about grace in the future, but we're not going there yet, but it's an important thing, and I'm looking forward to uh, considering it with you. But today, the Lord just put my heart, uh, just we need to talk about purity. This calling that we have is called an holy calling. The angels in heaven and the beasts that are around the throne, they worship God and they say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The primary defining attribute of God is holiness. He's holy. And holiness, I'd say, is a combination of two things. It's way more than that, but I'm breaking it down, making it simple. It's a combination of purity and it's a combination of completeness and perfection. But the first thing is that purity. It's purity. And the Lord's just reminding me to remind others that the true gospel of Jesus Christ is a call to purity. It's called a purity. Uh, in Thessalonians, Paul said in chapter 4, he said that this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. Your sanctification, sanctification, what does that mean? That's mean being set apart, being cleansed, being holy. And, and he says, he talks about abstaining from fornication. Why? Because that's a huge problem with the Gentiles. Amen? I mean, that's, that, that's our problem. And God has called us to this holiness. And that's why he says, Later, he says, uh, every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Again, sanctification is purity. It's purity. Um, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. And then verse 7, he says, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness. Purity. Okay? And then he explains, says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And this is just a reminder, maybe a refresher. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what gospel you believe. But a lot of people are now preaching a gospel where you're saved no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not a big deal. But that's not really the gospel we've been called to. In fact, the gospel we've been called by is a gospel that calls us back into fellowship with the Father of Spirits. It calls us back into fellowship with the one that Jesus Christ, when he prayed, he said, Oh, Holy Father. We're being called back into fellowship and union. We're being rejoined and reconciled to the Father of glory. And it's done through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. And when we believe, okay, true faith, we've been talking about faith, but this is important for us to understand. This is what we have in the new covenant. This is what the hope was in the new covenant, was that, that the children of Israel would finally receive a new heart. And God will put a new spirit within them. And that with this new heart and this new spirit, they would finally walk in his ways and please him. And that's what we have in the new covenant. Now, I know that was originally for Israel only, but guess what? Because of their unbelief, Romans chapter 11, we've been grafted into this new covenant. 
That's why Paul talks about it in Galatians 4. That's why he talks about it again in Hebrews. Um, we, we have access, these Gentiles who had nothing, Ephesians chapter 2. Now we get to enter into this new covenant. And in Hebrews 10, what does he say? He says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. When we come to faith in Christ, what happens is the blood of sprinkling, the blood of the new covenant. It's the everlasting blood that was offered up by the eternal spirit. That blood sprinkles our hearts and makes our hearts pure. Look at what, what Peter says in Acts chapter 15 as he's retelling the story of when Cornelius and his household believed the gospel. We know that Peter went, he, he was the first one who got to preach to the Gentiles, and he preached this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord of all, risen and judge, coming back to judge quick and dead, the one who can offer complete forgiveness of sins and eternal inheritance, and he preaches this. And while he's preaching, they believe. And while he's preaching, the Holy Ghost falls on them. And here's what Peter says as he retells the story. He says, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them. He's talking about us Jews and them Gentiles. Put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by by faith. The real faith of Jesus Christ, when you come to real faith, it's a faith that purifies. And it starts with purifying our hearts. That's where it starts. That's the inner sanctuary of our being, is our hearts. That's where our true feelings and our true thoughts and our true beliefs and, and the things that we really believe and really think, it dwells in the heart. Right? You know, back in the book of Proverbs, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So it's the heart. And the true faith of Jesus Christ is a faith that purifies the heart. Hallelujah. And that's why we receive the Holy Ghost. Again, think about this. The primary purpose of the Spirit of Wisdom is to teach men wisdom. The primary purpose of the spirit of understanding is to give people understanding. The primary purpose of the spirit of faith is to give people faith. The primary purpose of the spirit of grace is to minister grace. Okay, there's lots of spirits that are sent out by God, good spirits. There's also lots of unclean spirits and wicked spirits. But this thing called the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost... Why was that spirit given to us? You know why? It's to make us holy. It should be obvious, but somehow we've lost it through the years because we think the manifestation, the evidence of the Holy Ghost is people barking like dogs and rolling around and laughing like hyenas and all kinds of insanity. And then there's other people who think the, the proof of the Holy Ghost is that you can preach so hard that you can make everybody mad and you just hate everybody because you're so holy. And No, that's not, the, that's not the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The primary purpose of the Holy Ghost is to make us holy, to make us pure, and to guide us and work with us until we're complete in Jesus Christ. Why? Why? So that we can bear much fruit and be the Father's disciples and be Jesus Christ's disciples. That's how we bring our Father glory, is by bearing much fruit. But you can't bear fruit if you're dirty. See, the fruit we want to manifest, the manifestation of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. It's His love. It's His joy. It's His peace. It's His gentleness. It's His long-suffering. It's His goodness, His faith, His meekness, His temperance. And more, and even beyond that, the truth and all these things, He wants to manifest this through us. He's the vine. We're the branches. But we have to be plugged in and we have to be clean vessels. He's called us unto sanctification. This is a holy calling. That's why we've received 
the Holy Ghost so that he can cleanse us and make us pure. And it starts with the heart. When you believe the gospel and you truly get born again, your heart is made pure. Now, I know those people don't like that doctrine and they want to preach against that doctrine, but that's Bible and you'll experience it. I've experienced it. You'll experience it in Jesus Christ. But he doesn't want just our heart to be pure. Because you know what Paul prayed for the church of Thessalonica in chapter 5? He prayed that their whole spirit and soul and body would be preserved blameless. What was he talking about? He, he, right before he said, I pray that God sanctify you wholly. I want you to be completely sanctified, completely purified, not just the heart. Starts with the heart, but spirit, soul, and I would include mind in there and body. Wants the whole thing. Did you know that in Romans 12, he says, we can present our bodies. Now, I know we're told this body is a body of death. It is a body of death. And Paul calls it a vile body because, you know, it just produces the fruits of the flesh. But, but even this body, we can present holy and acceptable to God. If you've been convinced that your body is just, you can't do anything with it, and no. He says you're supposed to present your bodies holy and acceptable. Read it, Romans chapter 12. This is our reasonable service. And so this is just a reminder and a refresher for the body of Christ. We want to be used of God. We want to see what God's doing. We want to be in on what God's doing. We want to be vessels used by God for His glory. But this is a reminder that we, we won't be used. We won't be in on it if we're unclean. He's not going to use unclean vessels. He only is going to use us if we're pure. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. And it starts with that heart. It starts with believing Jesus Christ, believing that gospel, the faith. But I want you to remember, the true faith leads to purity. This is one way you can check yourself. Paul said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. You can examine yourself. Is the gospel that I've believed, is the, the word that I've been continuing in, the things that I've been hearing, the things that I've been growing in and learning, the things I've been doing, has this been leading to more and more purity? Have I been getting more and more victory over sin and uncleanness? Or is it not doing it for me? See, because true faith leads to purity. Why? Because true faith operates with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, his, his mission, his goal is to make you holy. And that's why he can give you power to preach and be a witness for Jesus. But that can only happen if you're clean. He doesn't use unclean vessels. Remember when Jesus Christ came and the unclean spirit said, We know who you are, Jesus, thou son of the most high. And Jesus would say, Shut up, hold your peace. Why? Because he doesn't want unclean spirits testifying of him. So you just always wonder, why, why is he telling them to shut up? They're preaching the truth. Because he doesn't want unclean people bearing his good news. He wants the gospel message to be something that is carried forth by clean vessels, those who have been cleansed and purified by Him, by His Holy Ghost. And so I'm just, it's just a reminder, we have a call to purity. This is a holy calling. And the true faith is purifying us. It's purifying us. Peter said, God purified their hearts by faith. And you know what Jesus says in John 15? He says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If we want to do something for God, it has to be by Jesus Christ. It has to be by his spirit. We can't do anything apart from him. Absolutely nothing. And he says, you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. He prayed to the Father and he said, Father, sanctify them. That means cleanse them, purify them, make them holy, set them apart for my work. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
And that's why, again, this all ties together. Are we hearing his voice? Is this the real faith of the Son of God? Is this his faith being ministered to us? If it is, then what we're going to see is purity. And let me tell you this. Purity is wonderful. It's wonderful. Man, I walked in defilement and uncleanness in my childhood and my youth. And it was misery. It was loneliness. It was heartache. It was confusion. It was darkness. And by the grace of my God, he has allowed me, he has called me into a holy calling where he's called me into purity. And I've been able to walk in purity now. And man, I'm telling you, purity is so much better. It's wonderful. I, I don't know how we got deceived into thinking that uncleanness was power. There's a power in uncleanness, but it's not nearly as powerful as purity. It's not the joy that we experience in purity is unspeakable. It's full of glory. The joy that they have in uncleanness is, is defilement. It's, it's temporary. It doesn't last. The peace and the peace of God that can rule in your hearts. It, but that you can't have that without purity. But you can't have purity without the Holy Ghost. And you don't get the Holy Ghost without faith. And so let's remind ourselves that through his word, again, you can't, get, you can't get faith without hearing his voice. Through hearing his voice, through his word, through the word of the Father, we're made clean. We're made clean. We're sanctified by his truth. Amen. Let's, let's pursue his truth no matter what the cost. Because the reality is, it will cost us some things in the sense it costs us pride, it costs us time, it might cost us some material possessions. But the reality is God will freely give these things to us. It's not something you actually have to pay for. And, and not only will he freely give it to us, but the reward, the reward of purity is so much greater than anything this world can give you. So much greater than anything that the devil can offer you. We've been called to holiness. So don't despise it. Uh, there, there's been a move in, in modern Christianity that despises holiness, that mocks holiness. Holiness is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's of God. He's holy. Jesus Christ is holy. And he's given us, if we believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And so let's continue in this gospel, this gospel of purity, the gospel of faith in Jesus Christ. Let's continue in hearing the word, believing the word, of being sanctified, being purified, so that literally, not just the heart, but the heart, the spirit, the soul, the mind, and even our bodies can be presented to the Lord as holy, acceptable offerings. Amen. This is the calling. Amen.